What's up everyone, welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So the Nintendo Switch is a wildly popular handheld slash gaming console that you can pretty much take with you and use wherever you are, as well as dock it and get a pretty decent gaming experience at home. Now, my only one complaint with this is that primarily, if you don't go for any limited edition ones, you only get two color choices. You either get the console with two gray Joy-Cons or you get this very common red and blue neon Joy-Con combination. However, in the past, I've gone ahead and changed this kit and we're gonna do the same thing today. I've got a new kit that I wanna change and I wanna make another updated tutorial on how to do it since a couple of you have pointed out that my way of handling some cables in the past may have been questionable. So today I wanna to make sure that I do all this correctly and I show you guys and the color that I'm gonna be using is this chameleon green purple color. So it's actually a very unique color. It's gonna add an extra pop to your switch. I'll go ahead and show you what the color actually looks like. So that's the color and you can see it has a bunch of different shades. Now, this is a relatively simple install. The only complicated parts come into the Joy-Cons. Actually changing the switch cover itself is pretty straightforward. So in today's video, you're gonna see what all comes with the kit that you purchased from Extreme Rate. I'll have a link in the description for you guys to go ahead and grab it. I'm gonna show you exactly how to open up your switch and the buttons and how to change and install this kit relatively easily and quickly. So this will be a detailed video, which means it's gonna be longer. So go ahead and grab some food and some snacks so that you guys are well, nourish throughout this video and hopefully everything will be successful and then I'll show you guys some end nice glorified 4k shots of what it looks like with the new case on it so before we jump into all that let's just get a word from today's sponsor and then I will catch you guys on the flip side Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVG Mall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. Okay guys, so this is the actual color of it. it. Looks mostly green on camera, but there are some angles in purple like you can see there. So it's got like this cool color shift theme going on. And inside the packaging, you get all the different buttons that you're gonna need for the Joy-Cons. You actually get the Joy-Con cases themselves. You get a screwdriver with an adjustable attachment here so you can use the different bits that come included. It's a nice little upgrade compared to what they used to send out in their other kits. You've got some accessories inside the bag. These are just speaker grills that are gonna go on top of this cover here. And then you've got the different bits that will be used as well. Plus you get the springs that get loaded into the Joy-Con panels for the shoulder button. So this is basically everything you get. Now we're gonna start off with our switch. So now the first thing you wanna do with your switch is you wanna remove and detach your Joy-Cons. So go ahead and take those off. Make sure it's powered off. Flip it up on its face. Open the kickstand underneath. And if you have an SD card in there, go ahead and remove that at this point and set that aside. So now what we're gonna do is to open this, we're gonna have to take out the screw that's underneath the kickstand. So you'll see right down there, there's a screw. You've got two screws that are on the bottom of the unit. These guys here that you gotta remove. You've got one screw on the top, two screws on the top sides, and then you're gonna have two screws that go the middle ones where the Joy-Con rail is, so you've got one, two, three, four, and five. You're gonna get the third up from the bottom or the center. It's basically the center screw on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking those screws off and then I'll show you what it looks like when you get this plate detached. So for some reason, the Phillips attachment on this was not working with the screws. I don't know why that is, but I've got an extra spare little one from another kit that I've used. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use that to get the Phillips head screws done. So just in case I didn't mention before, these four screws that are on the back are Y-shaped and it's a proprietary Nintendo style screw basically. And these are just normal Phillips heads that are on the Joy-Con rails, the top here and underneath the micro SD card as well as the top of the switch. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue to remove these little screws. Okay, once you've got all the screws removed, this thing should literally be trying to force its way off and it comes off very, very easily and very gently. Also make sure that there's nothing in the game card slot. Make sure that's empty and just open that so it's got easier room to basically come off of the console. And that is basically just how you take off of your backplate. Now this is basically an SX core modification done to this 
switch, so you're not gonna see something sticking out like this. This is basically part of the mod chip that's been installed into the switch. So anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start doing our change to the back plate. So the first thing we need off the back plate is we're gonna have to remove the kickstand and you're gonna transplant the kickstand into your new shell. So to take that out, all you gotta do is remove these two really small screws here and it'll lift up this entire thing. So I'll zoom in there for you guys to take a look at this. But these are the two Phillips screws that you're gonna be taking off. So go ahead and remove those and make sure you keep track of what screws go where because they all have different lengths and that can be a big pain in the butt if you don't know what you're doing. And as you pop it out, it literally just slides right out just like that. That's how it goes. Okay, so you're gonna need this mechanism. Now they give you another one of your own kickstands that match with the case. So you're gonna have to swap out the actual kickstand, but you need this mechanism here. So doing that is obviously very simple. It's just one screw that requires you to take off. And in fact, it's actually a Y screw. All right, so there's your new kickstand that's ready. Now we're going to do the same thing here. So to put it inside, you're gonna slide this through like this, line this up correctly so that it sits. And the best way to do it is just to lock it on the bottom. Now those two holes have lined up and we're gonna go ahead and replace those Phillips screws that we took off earlier and that is how the back plate should look once it's got the kickstand installed. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to install the included speaker covers on the front of the back panel, basically. And they come already pre-installed with some double-sided adhesive or sticky tape. And so really, all you're gonna be doing is just laying them flat in each slot, just like that. Once you get those speaker grills installed, this is what it should look like. So it gives a much more finished appearance. Okay, so once you've removed the game card slot, or sorry, the kickstand, then you also have to remove the game card cover slot. So again, this is just one screw. You put this on to the other one and that's literally all there is to switching out the back plates. All right guys, so now it's time to take apart the Joy-Con. This is actually the most challenging part, but once you're able to do one, the other is easy. So in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to take apart one of them. In the kit you get, you'll have specific buttons that line up to the right side and specific to the left side. So if you guys can see, I already went ahead and did one for the left one and I've gone ahead and changed it. But forewarning, this is pretty tough to do. The, the Joy-Con at least, the back shell was pretty simple, but the Joy-Con is gonna be hard. So pay attention to this. There's a lot of delicate stuff inside the Joy-Con controller that I want you guys to be mindful of while you're removing and taking apart pieces and cables and whatnot. So follow my instructions to the T and you guys will be perfectly fine. Hopefully you shouldn't have any issues doing this and let's go ahead and begin. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna flip this over, you're gonna take out these four screws here, which are Y-shaped screws. So you're gonna need the black screwdriver that came included in the kit and start removing those. So to take the cover off, once you've removed the four screws, all you gotta do is pull up with the middle part and together and you can see there's two ribbon cables that open up you want to be very careful when you do this because you don't want the ribbon cables to break so what I would do is grab a trusty pair of tweezers like this and then just go ahead and grab them and pluck them up very gently don't be too rough because these ribbon cables are the, a nightmare and anything I ever work with I hate these cables the most because they have the easiest opportunity to get messed up. So just be careful when you do that, in other words. So now, once you've opened that up, you've got three pieces here, basically. There's there's a center piece here, this bracket, the outside shell. Let me show you guys here. So you've got this outside shell, you've got this center piece here, and then you've got this 
cover here. So these three pieces need to be taken apart and then we're gonna replace that with the other ones. So I'll show you each one. So first things first, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and start taking out these screws. There's one screw here and then there's four screws under the actual battery. And to remove that, it's simple. So you're just gonna take your screwdriver and work your way around the controller. To take the rumble pack out, to literally just grab it, pluck it out. It's stuck with a little bit of adhesive. So you're gonna pull a little bit. Don't put too much force, but just the right amount. Comes out just like that. Uh, again, to get under the battery, just pluck it out or, or pry it out basically. Try and get under it and there you go. So putting it under like that. Now the battery is away. And on this side, we've got this part here. That's actually a, looks like an antenna of some sort that's connected right here. If you see this gold pin here, um, I'm gonna leave that in there right now cause I don't need to take it out, but if I have to, I will. So here we are with this centerpiece that different than the other one, there's no center screws around here like I thought there would be, but there are two up here that's holding this down. So we can go ahead and remove those in the meantime, pretty much any screw that you see, just take them off. And just be gentle. This is very, very delicate stuff. It's very, very small stuff. So if you are an impatient person or you're a little bit too aggressive with working with electronics, then you're gonna end up damaging something. So my advice is be very, very gentle. So and if, if you got all the screws off carefully and correctly, this should come off pretty easily, but you wanna see there is one ribbon cable and I want you guys to see that's right here. This ribbon cable here. I'm going to zoom into it so you guys can see that ribbon cable, this guy. And if you pull really hard and obnoxiously, it's going to just rip off. So you want to be careful again, not to do that. So in here, in this case, I can see how the angle is and I'm going to kind of lift this up very gently, just, just like that. And I'm going to pull this out. All right. So, Here's that ribbon cable I was talking about. You wanna be careful that you don't mess that up. Now that we've got this taken apart and on the side, you can go ahead and move this to the side. Be careful not to lose any of the screws, so make sure you put those aside as well. Okay, so this button just literally pops right off. You wanna make sure that you keep the spring. So take the spring off and put that to the side. You can get rid of this button for now. And now we've got a couple more screws that we're gonna to need to take off the board. So we've got this one here, we've got this here, we have this, this, and that is about it from what I can see here. Okay, so now we're getting access to the stuff under the board, which are the buttons. So in this case, we can begin prying this up. Again, you always wanna be careful with ribbon cables. And with these being as delicate as they are, it's kinda of hard to see where ribbon cables are located. So because this has sensor here, there is an extra ribbon cable that's connected to all of this stuff. And so taking this out and transplanting is gonna be a little bit more difficult than say the other stuff that we will take out on the, the other controller that I did. So go ahead and remove this plastic part too. Again, you gotta be careful. And this is just stuck down with some good quality adhesive. And there you can see it came off just like that. Again, you wanna be delicate with this stuff. Um, don't worry about the buttons, put those aside for now. And the only other thing I can see that's connected right now is the ribbon cable that's right here. This ribbon cable here is the only thing that's holding these two things together. Theoretically, you should just be able to pop all of this off just like that make your life easy. You don't have to worry about doing anything different. So just the easiest way to do it. Let's pop it off just like that. And here's the home button for it as well. Okay, we're gonna take this guy off too. We're gonna use this on our other shell. So it's just adhesive that's on there. And I don't really know what the purpose of this thing is to be honest, but it's always good to make sure you replace things the way that they're supposed to be and also take off this rubber cap here like this. Okay, it always is handy to have a, a good pair of tweezers handy because they work well. So I'm gonna gently move all of this stuff aside. And here's our body that we're going to be transplanting the new stuff into. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this guy back in the way it was on the other guy. 
And usually this is the hardest thing that I, I struggled with on the last one too, is just to get it to line up correctly and actually stay put. Because while you put the joystick in, usually it just gets irritated by this and it just becomes a pain. So here we go. Make sure you press down on the adhesive side, which are these pointers here. Press down on them pretty firmly. And we're gonna basically just begin moving all the stuff back into this new shell. So you would start off with your buttons first. We're gonna put your buttons, and if you see the way that they're designed, it's pretty straightforward. So if you need reference for it, you can always just pick up your old one just so you know where everything goes. And since this is the right side one, I wanna make sure we have the buttons in the right spot also. So in this case, we have Y, oops. Y on the left, X on the top, A on the right, and B on the bottom. So we wanna make sure we follow the same order when we're putting the buttons in. So let's see what we have here. It's B, so B is gonna be on the bottom. We're gonna put that on the bottom part. And they, there's only one way these can fit so that they're aligned correctly. And you can just keep wiggling them around until they sit the way that they're supposed to sit. So there we go. You can tell that that sat flush just like that. And if I look at it on this side, the B is showing pretty easily and it's right. So go ahead and repeat that for all the other buttons before we're gonna to top this back onto it. Once you have all the buttons in its place for there, you're gonna go ahead and put this just like that. And these center things line up perfectly too, so make sure that they go in. And that basically just holds it down so nothing moves in the meantime. All right, don't forget your home button. Make sure you orient that the right way also. There's only one way it can go, facing the right direction. Go ahead and put that in the way it's supposed to, just like that. Now we have that included, and we're gonna go ahead and put our start button in there as well. And you can see the start button fits a very specific way, just like that. Go ahead and cover that also with its rubber grommet type grip, cap, whatever it's called so it stays in place while you put everything together. Now we are ready to start transplanting all the other things to this area. And it should be straightforward. We're gonna to try to make this as easy as possible without having a lot of issues. But if we do have issues, we will take them as we go. And don't forget to install that last cover on the home button there either. Okay, so let's start bringing that stuff back into here. Okay, and very simply, we're gonna take our board of stuff that we just brought out, and we're gonna try and do the same thing that we did while we took it off. We're gonna just try and reinstall it the same way. So, I'm gonna try and bring this closer to you guys to see, but basically you wanna make sure this plastic piece comes in where it was supposed to be, and you're gonna sit that back down where it's supposed to be, just like that, okay? Same thing with this sensor. So we remember how we took the sensor off? It's really easy. You're gonna make sure you route it the correct way and put that back in where it's supposed to be. And since there was adhesive on it, you can go ahead and press down on it and it'll stay in its spot. So using smaller tools or having something that's easy to kind of go in there makes it a lot simpler of a job to do. Now, the only thing I'll warn you guys to be careful of while you're working on stuff that's this delicate is that things tend to move around while you're fixing them, meaning like this cover can come off while you're placing stuff. So just be extra careful when you're putting things back together and you're paying attention to what it is that you're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the board here and bring the board in. And so far, even before I put this analog stick down completely, I'm gonna go ahead and position it so it lines up correctly and doesn't damage that little thing that we had lined up for it. So, and putting the joystick, honestly guys, can be a little bit tricky at times, but once you get it, it should just fit in really flush just like that. And there we go. So now we've installed the board, we've got the joystick in, and the first thing you wanna do after you get this installed in flush is just put one of the screws in so that it can at least hold this down in its place without moving and creating a problem for you. So you guys can see, I'm gonna, Put this joystick one where it belongs. All right, so our joystick is now in place where it's supposed to be. I might as well just throw the other screw on and now I can at least let go of it because it's not giving as much pressure onto the buttons as it was before. 
Again, same thing, same drill for all the screws that go here. So, so far, not too bad. Pretty straightforward. Don't forget the little ones. Once you've installed the motherboard back into this shell, you can go ahead and put the top button back onto this. So in this case, the right side would have this spring would get loaded into this thing right here. So I'm gonna try and show you, but it's very delicate. It's right here. This little middle pin here is what you're gonna put this spring onto. So it goes on just like that. Oops. So that spring should sit just like that. And then that spring will then line up inside here and you just press down and here we go, our button's in place. It's literally that simple. Just wanna make sure it sits in place. And it's gonna get more fixed when you start closing everything up, but you can see that this is starting to get in place now like that. Now that we've got this on and the button on, we can go ahead and move this aside for a second because we're gonna work on the middle part, which is this guy here. And we're gonna transfer that to here. So we want to move everything from here onto here. And so to do that, it's very simple. This button actually just comes off by prying it, but you gotta be careful because if you pry it too hard on one side, you're gonna break a clip or possibly break the plastic that it's attached to. So just gently go from one side to the other and just pry it out, just literally just like that. You don't wanna be too harsh with it, remember. And look, it just came out that simply. Take the two springs with it. And now the last thing you should get rid of or take off is this one little screw there, which is a Phillips screw. So grab your orange screwdriver, go ahead and take that out. And now you should be ready to move that piece right here over to this. Okay, and we're gonna grab the same screw that we just had. Make sure it is. Lined up. And then install it back into the middle part of the shell. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take those springs and you're gonna put those springs right back onto these little poles that are right on each side of the button. This is the button here. Hear that click. Easiest way, you could do this by hand. It's not too hard um, and it's just easy to force it in like that. It sits in its groove. All right, now let's get our another button. Here's the other button that we're gonna be using and this obviously has a specific way to fit in. Um, the easiest thing that you wanna do is make sure that these things line up with the actual springs. You see these little tips here? I'll try and focus on the side, there you go, these little tips, those should line up with the springs. And then once you just push it back in place, it's that simple, guys, look. The button works perfectly fine. So we've got our middle piece ready, and now the last piece that we gotta work on is here. So just make sure you keep your area neat too, don't be like me, move all this stuff away from there. Last one you're gonna wanna take out is this guy, here. So you're gonna grab that one screw and remove that part. Or actually there's two screws here. You're gonna to wanna to take off, but I believe when you take one of them off, you don't even need to take the other off. So let's see, let's test that theory. You wanna change out these buttons, really simple. Just make sure they're oriented correctly. And then I'll show you guys how to put this back together. Okay, so I finished off fixing this piece and getting all the buttons connected to that. It was pretty straightforward, like I explained. Um, now what we're gonna do is combine all three pieces and make sure that we start with this, with the middle one going on top of this and then this one closing up on top. There's three screws that we gotta replace. Those three are here. It's this one, this one, which are these two, and then this guy down here, which goes on the bottom. This is actually the tray for the battery to sit in and this guy's gonna stick out here on the right side like we saw before. So let's go ahead and finish this up real quick. Okay. So when connecting this, the hardest part that you're gonna have to do is actually put this ribbon cable back here. 
into this part here. This is gonna be a little bit challenging, but we're gonna use our tweezers to give us some help to do it. And I'll show you guys if there's a technique on how you should fit this in. But the easiest way is gonna be try and keep it facing yourself and guiding it with the tweezer to where it needs to go. All right, so we got that cable in. I'll make sure all of our buttons are in. Okay, so once you get the middle piece ribbon cable installed into the board, you're gonna to wanna to take the outer shell and attach both of those ribbon cables to their respective parts. Otherwise, closing it up is gonna be a pain, so make sure you do this part before you even close the middle one in with the screws. It's gonna be the right and easy way to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my tweezer here to kind of guide this while I hold this up. This is very hard to do, and it's not delicate whatsoever. Or sorry, it's very delicate and it's not easy whatsoever. Okay, and I think I got both of the ribbon cables in and this sitting flush. Now you can go ahead and close up the middle thing with these last three screws. Again, just reverse order of how we opened it. And just like that, we can go ahead and begin to close this. Before you tighten in, make sure you check every button. And voila, you're done. That's how you do both of the controllers. It is very tiny and can be a pain in the butt, but this is how you do both of the controllers, guys. So guys, that was pretty much the tutorial on how to go ahead and install a different kind of shell kit for your Nintendo Switch. Now this will work with any Switch that you have with the exception of a Switch Lite, obviously, because that's not the same shape, but there's a ton of different color selections that they offer. Uh, matter of fact, I still have some laying around from the last time I did one. I actually have a gold one. Tell you what, if you guys stayed through to the end of this video and you caught this part, um, go ahead and leave a comment below saying that you are well aware of the giveaway for the gold Switch one. And I'm gonna randomly pick one person from the comment section and I'm gonna send out a free Switch kit that's gold in color. So someone out there is gonna be pretty lucky and pretty happy. So this again is the chameleon green color and you can see how the color shift changes. Um, it looks really nice. It feels really solid and glossy. Um, it gives a good feel overall compared to the stock OEM finish that's on there. I actually like it and you know, I don't feel as worried if I'm dragging my console around like this on a table and that it's getting scuffed up on the original Joy-Cons and stuff. And even if I have some of my kids around the house, you know, if they wanna play with it, especially considering that this was specifically for my daughter. So I'm not worried that she's gonna damage it. So with the kit and a glass screen protector, that's pretty much all you need to make sure that your Switch stays safe. And when it comes time to resale or sell something, you can always pop back your original kit that came with the Switch. So let me know what you guys thought of this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions below or if you're struggling with installing any of this stuff because it's pretty simple. I mean, actually, let me rephrase. This isn't simple by any means. So the simple part was just doing the back of the tablet, but doing the actual Joy-Con controllers was miserable. And it took me a lot more time than I thought, so it's probably gonna take you a lot more time as well. Just be very careful with the cables, just be delicate, look at every screw that you're taking, and remember, like I mentioned, always keep tweezers with you because tweezers are a godsend when working on this type of stuff. But anyways, if you guys like this content, as always, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And if you're new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. I'm always making new content on the Switch, on the Vita, and PCs, and a whole bunch of other random tech stuff. So it is always a pleasure to have you guys here watching my content. And as always, stay smiling, stay safe, and I will see you guys on my next one. Peace out.